Hello everyone, this is Pastor Winston. And you know it's Good Friday 2021. And as we're progressing through the Sermon on the Mount and our study of that and in particular with the Lord's Prayer, it's only fitting that here we come to the place where um, lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. The sixth petition in the Lord's Prayer, the, the last one really, and the most powerful one, the most fitting one to be looking at on Good Friday. So what we uh, what we want to see here, and I'll, let me put this uh, verse up on the screen for you so you can be thinking about that instead of looking at me. And so, lead us on into temptation. You know, this, this verse really conveys to us more than, you know, everything that we really know that's going on. I mean, we know that we're, we're constantly being tempted by this world, the things of this world tempt us. We hear the voices of this world. We're drawn into it, and that's what the, that's what the devil does. That's what the evil one does. Is he entices us in to the things of this world, and it makes us think that that's where our salvation lies. In some way, you know, we'll be better off, or something will will happen that'll save us, if you will. But that's not that's not true. The world has a different dynamic. It operates. Its ruler is, is the devil. The devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeing who he might devour. And his, his, uh, he's the shepherd of evil, really, if you think about it. And, and his staff is death. That's, that's what he really operates on. And so we, re, we realize that, you know, evil, whether it's Satan, the devil, or demons, or agents, or evil, Whatever is a real, supernatural, personal evil, and one that you know we we can get caught up into, and and so there is another player, and that's us. So when we do get caught up into it individually, and all of us have done that from time to time, we we become in our behavior part of the world and part of evil. And so we need this. We we need this prayer. In fact, uh, one of the commentators that I really like, Dale Brunner, he um, he he says this. He says the the two halves of this petition can be joined together. It's like a temptation is a pit into which we fall, and the evil one is the power whose influence just draws us into that pit. And so what we what we see is that it recognizes the fact that deliverance is is not within our grasp. De- in fact, the word deliver here is more than like you know getting a package from Amazon or delivering the mail or or a pizza or something like that. It has much more force and power into it. it Another word, you know, a synonym might be snatch or to draw from this evil, deliver us from evil. It's as though we're in it, you see. And we we know that, but we don't know it. We know it, but we don't want to admit it. But what we really need is this prayer. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You know, Paul put it well here in um, and how that might happen with the really a a foretaste of Good Friday. Looking back on it, though, for Paul, but explaining it, if you will. And here in Romans 3, he says, For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, to be received, all this to be received, by faith in Jesus Christ. And that is an an amazing event. That's what's happening on Good Friday. In fact, really, the events of Good Friday are stunning when you think about them. That's why it's called good. You know, the events of Good Friday convey the mystery, the power, and the significance of Jesus' death. Simultaneously, an atoning sacrifice for sin a picture of divine glory, an example of perfect self-giving love, and the surprising means of conquering evil. Yeah, 
That's what we're talking about. The surprising means of conquering evil. And, and in, in a sense, this was um, a snatching of the world and all that God would call from the grip of Satan. That his main staff, his club, would be defeated once and for all. Death would no longer reign, but life eternal through Jesus Christ. And so <clears throat> the resurrection has accomplished that for us. And we're going to see that in all of its glory as we celebrate the revelation, rev resurrection. But now we're reflecting on these events that lead up to his death and of his death. And what's so remarkable about this, the Good Friday was supposed to be the triumph of evil, but it ended up being the victory of the cross. And that's what's really so absolutely cool about Good Friday. And remembering that Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, willingly went to the cross, knowing that there would be joy in this, because the, the righteousness and peace of God would now reign forever, and forgiveness and salvation would be poured out on the nations. And so that's Good Friday. And I want to encourage you, as you reflect on these things and remember these things, to attend our service today, this evening at 5.30. And we're going to be reflecting and reminding, uh, reminded of that. And, you know, um, you might want to pick up the, the Bible and look at the book of John, chapters 16 through 19. And those are, it really describes the events leading up to the resurrection. And just ponder those things. That these, This is what Jesus gave for us. And we are most blessed because of it. We have freedom and power and assurance because of what happened on Good Friday. I wish you all a happy Easter and a wonderful Good Friday.